Hey everyone, yes, I have a box, but it's not just any box. This is the best 7200 series Xeon Phi CPU that they ever made, the 7290. So let's open it up. This apparently is new old stock from HP Enterprises or HPE. Hence the new old stock. Look at the foam. Still perfectly sealed, original. Hewlett Packard Enterprise, the original information for it. Even comes with um, some thermal compound and isopropanol, yeah, I can never pronounce that right, alcohol wipes. So that's really cool. So let's get this out of the way. Let's take a look at this because there's two variants of the 7200 series. There's the regular like 7210 or the 7290 and then there's also an F variant. This is an F variant. I only got that because it was cheaper. I've never handled one of these bare before. It's got this interesting little frame on it. But uh 3467, I believe that's the socket number for it. A lot of newer Xeon CPUs use the same socket, but they're not interchangeable with the Xeon Phi system. Now, the reason why this one is an F variant is this extra little piece that sticks out on the substrate. It has something to do with infinity fabric and networking and reducing latency. From my understanding, it's an optional thing. You don't have to use it, and the motherboard that I have for the Xeon Phi does not support it. So it should just hang off and do nothing and it shouldn't affect the performance of the CPU itself. But look how big this freaking thing is. Hopefully you can see that. Intel Xeon Phi 7290F. Now what I currently have in my system is a 7210. That 7210 has 64 cores and 256 threads. With a base speed of 1.3 gigahertz a single core of 1.5 gigahertz and an all core turbo basically of 1.4. This kicks it up from 64 to 72 cores and from 256 threads to 288 threads. This is the best one they ever had. The base speed on this is 1.5 gigahertz, single core is 1.7 gigahertz, all cores basically 1.6 gigahertz so we're getting 200 megahertz extra on all the cores when they're running their algorithms and we're getting more cores and more threads so we're hoping in Verus because on Verus right now we get about 42 mega hashes on the 7210 I'm hoping for 55 60 would be phenomenal but um Phelan who's found on the rabbit mining discord He's actually done some education, educational number crunching, if you want to go with that. And he's thinking 50 to 55. I'm hoping 55 to 60. Let's see who's right. First off, let me go ahead and shut down the system and we'll bring it on over here because it takes a special screw. And I got to figure out if I even have it. Okay, so here's the inside of the motherboard and the factory super micro redone coolant systems, liquid water cooling system. And it's nice because it actually tells you exactly which order and to take off the screws. There's four, two over here, two over here, and then there's two alignment pins over here. It actually tells you on this label which ones to unscrew and rescrew in which order. So cross my fingers and hope the heck I do this right because I've never played with anything like this. Okay, we are free, sort of. Oh geez, the CPU came off with it. I guess that's the way it's supposed to be. Interesting. Yeah, because there's no actual like lever to pull it down or anything. So you really got to be careful when you pull this up so you don't bend any of those pins. So let's see what I do here. Okay, it's an interesting carrier system for it. 
Okay, let me clean this off real quick and we'll take a look and make sure it is S7210, even though we already saw it in the BIOS as such and, and on Hive OS. Okay, so yes, it is indeed a 7210. Let's see if I can get the right angle there. There you go. You should be able to see that now. It is a 7210 Xeon Phi. Now, this is the regular, not the F variant. If we pull the other one up here, you can also see. Yeah, it goes this way, I think. Yeah, that looks right. Uh, it has this little extra piece sticking up, little piece sticking up right here, whereas this CPU does not have it. Now, the reason why I'm not worried about it is if you look down here at the bottom, see this gap right here and this little block which isn't populated? That's where it would go if it had this infinity fabric area. Let me see if I can move that out of the way there. But it should work perfectly fine with this CPU, even without that there. So let me clean off the water block here and apply some fresh solder paste, or solder paste, some uh, fresh thermal paste. Let me just bring this down here real quick. Now that's nice and clean. Look at it. It's a really nice piece of machined copper base for this water block. Yes. Nice. Okay. So that installs that without the heat sink. So we're going to give it a shot and see how good they're... Let's see here. Shin Etsu Micro C. Interesting, their uh, thermal compound is. So let's give that a shot. And the way they say it, since we got these two breathing holes, that's still fair. Ew, I'm not sure about this stuff. I think it might be too old. Oh my God, it doesn't even stick. Okay, forget that. Time to bust out the, um, <laughs> I think this stuff is too old. <laughs> Let me go get some uh, thermal grizzly. I hope I still have enough for the cryo knot because uh, I'm getting kind of low in the tube here. So hopefully I have enough. Oh, just enough. The tube's empty. I think it's enough. It better be enough. Because that tube is empty. That's all she wrote. Okay, so now we should be able to gingerly put this back on and it should clip into place. There we go. That should be a 7290F. And you can barely see it sticking out right here. That's the extra extension for the CPU that would have been connected to, it's not an Infinity Fabric, it's an Infinity something, but it's for networking and low latency. And it doesn't bother it at all. So it is a good fit. Let's go ahead and put the cover back on get it plugged in and see if we can even access it through IPMI first before we turn it on and see if it blows up or if I did it right. Okay, it is booting right now. Let it go through its boot because it takes it a minute or two for it to go through everything and we'll get into the BIOS. CPU. Socket zero, processor ID, it's an interesting ID, but it is showing up as 1.5 gigahertz. Uh, 7290F, there we go. We are good. So let me go through here because I had to clear the BIOS or clear the CMOS. So let me go through the settings and get this all working correctly. And then we'll jump into Hive OS. Okay, it just started up. It's still starting up the miners. As you can tell, they're popping up right now. But down here we can see CPU 288 threads, Intel Xeon 5 CPU 7290F at 1.5 gigahertz. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So let's let this finish up here, starting up, and we'll see what numbers we get. Okay, so I decided to let it run overnight just so I can figure out exactly where we are. Like right here is where we were last time. And if I come on over here, you see about anywhere, about 43 mega hash. And that was on the 7210. Then we were busy playing with it. And then right here is all on the 7290. And I would venture to say we went from like 42 to like 52. So, I mean, everything bounces around, but yeah, we got some pretty good peaks in here, like 56. But I would say the average, we picked up 10 mega hash going from the 7210 to the 7290F. The only drawback is, now of course right here you see it going weird. That's because the pull I was mining to went down. So I got to tell them to reset his daemon again. But either which way, the only problem that I have with the 7290F 
which I didn't realize when I ordered it, it only has four PCIe lanes available. All the rest of them are being used by that Infini fabric, whatever it is, for the networking. Um, the regular 7290 has 36 PCIe lanes available. But I picked up the 7290F because I got it for $185 brand new used, new old stock. Whereas if a regular 7290 still goes for $500. Bucks. And I didn't realize that until I started doing this testing. So it's great. I picked up an extra 10 mega hash, but now I can't run two cards on that motherboard, let alone eventually I want to try using one or hopefully two of these on that motherboard and consolidate it, take it out of that ATX case and put it on an open air eight card rack and run eight Vega 56s on it and also do Varus hash. So on the next video, we're gonna go ahead and swap back over to 7210 because I'm waiting for more thermal paste to come in. And we're gonna try loading up four or eight and see if I can get both two of these units to work on that motherboard. If so, we're going to proceed and make a full mining rig out of it. It's going to be the most unique rig you've ever seen. So until next time, thanks for watching. Come check us out in the Mining Misfit Discord, and I will see you on the next video.